How's it going, everyone? Big Sean Power 10 here. Now, I know that lately I've been a little off schedule with the videos, and I apologize for that. But I'm looking to get back on track this week, and I'm going to start by previewing this week's game against the Navy Midshipmen when the Irish go to play them at New, uh, New Meadowlands Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But before I get to the preview of that game, I want to do a little brief recap of last week's 44-20 victory over Western Michigan. Now, overall in this game, I was really impressed with how the Irish performed. Um, game ball definitely goes to Michael Floyd in this one. 157 yards receiving and three touchdowns. One of those touchdowns being an 80-yard touchdown catch on the first play of the game. So, once again, another, another outstanding performance from Michael Floyd. Um, and also, I know I've said this in video after video, but quarterback Dane Christ, he continues to get better and better week in and week out. And I can't say that enough. Um, he's definitely proven to, to be a leader and has the potential to be a really great quarterback in the next couple of years. Um, he's gradually working the mistakes out of the system, and I really see good, good things ahead for him. Uh, this, uh, this, in this game, he had 255 passing yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. Another great day for, for Dane Christ. And also, an honorable mention goes out to the tight end Tyler Eifert. Now, Eifert, he is uh, stepping in for uh, tight end Kyle Rudolph, who unfortunately we lost for the season due to a hamstring injury. And Eifert, he really did a great job this past week in filling Rudolph's shoes. Um, had about 70 yards receiving and one touchdown. That one touchdown being a 39-yard reception. Um, the only mistake that, that he really made all day was he did fumble the ball once, but you know he got we got it back and it didn't come back to hurt us. But still, Tyler Eifert, don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, overall I was happy with the, with the performance. But the one thing that I wasn't happy about, and I know that any Notre Dame fan watching this has heard this plenty of times, but it cannot be said enough or addressed enough, are problems with being consistent and not playing the full four quarters of football. Uh, and, you can, and you can just tell that Brian Kelly, he knows about it, and he wasn't happy about it. You can tell that at the end of the game. You know, and even though we put up 27 points in the first court, in the first half, excuse me, um, we still let Mich Western Michigan stick around. I mean, we were only beating them by 10 at the half. And, you know, no disrespect to Western Michigan, but we were, we were clearly the better team that day. And... We just kept letting them stick around, making mistakes, um, you name it. But um, nonetheless, though, I, I can't complain too much because in that second half, we really showed up to play and we finished the job. I believe I think we we outscored them 17 to three in the second half. And you know, so I mean, I was happy to see us win convincingly, but just a little food for thought. Think if we could have played that way in the first half as well as we did in the second half for the full game. And th think of what the score would, would have looked like then. But nonetheless, we beat him by 24 points, and I can't complain. But we have got to get better with our consistency. Enough said there. Now, on to this week's game against Navy. Now, surprisingly enough, and I never thought I'd be saying this, but Navy has had the upper edge over us the last three years. Uh, they've beaten us two out of the last three times. And Navy, as we all know, is well known for their triple option offense. And for the, last, for the last few years, they've really been a program that's on the rise. Um, they've had some impressive victories, and they've had a few winning seasons. And you know, Look out, this team could be a potential threat down the road, a serious potential threat when it comes to you know, rankings and whatnot. But um, Now, the triple option offense, as we all know, is uh, one of those offenses that eats up a lot of clock, and the quarterback has a lot of options that he can do with that football. Running it, running it himself, handing it off to the fullback or the halfback on a sweep, uh, option, whatever it is, or even on occasions throw. And I say that, and I know this sounds like basic stuff that I'm sputtering out, but um, I say that because Navy is not a team that throws the ball often, but when they do, it comes at a time when you least expect it because, you know, you're already, um, they run the ball so much, you, you gotta, they, got, they get you playing to run the whole game, and then they hit you with the, with the pass that goes right over your head. And when you're least expecting it, and that came back to hurt us on one play last season, which was a 52-yard touchdown. But last year in South Bend, uh, this Navy backfield, they just ripped us apart on the ground. Uh, I think they had about, I think, two or 300 yards rushing against us last year.
last year. It was something ridiculous like that. And we had a lot of trouble stopping them. Now, of course, Navy's uh, star players, without a doubt, quarterback Ricky Dobbs. This kid is a very solid quarterback, has a lot of potential to do, to do some great things with his career, and even under the pros, he decides to go pro. But um, the key to stopping this triple option offense, in my opinion, it's going to fall a good chunk of it on our linebackers. I'm talking Manti Teo, Darius Fleming, Carlo Calabrese, and so on and so forth. It's going to be very important that those guys make the reads and make some plays because, you know, it, it's, that's just how the triple option is. You know, if, if the defensive line can't pick it up, then it's going to be their responsibility to back them up. But I know, it's, I know this is basic knowledge, you guys, and I know I probably sound like an idiot, but it's, that's just how it's going to be with Nate. That's just the, you know, the kind of game that they play. So, uh, offensively, this is, this is going to be the game where we cannot make any mistakes. We have got to score and score often. And no turnovers, nothing. Just We have to score. We're going to, we're going to score a lot of points to win this one. But overall, I, I mean, overall, if we can execute, we shouldn't have a problem. That's all I can say. But, you know, we just it, basically what it comes down to is the is being consistent and being able to play the full, the full four quarters of football like Brian Kelly's been talking about, like the media's been talking about, so on and so forth. So, but if we can do that, we shouldn't have any problem in this game. But still, though, at the same time, Navy is not a team to be overlooked. As I said, they are a team that's on the rise. And, you know, that's, uh, that's really all I can say, you guys. It's, it's just going to be a... It's, it, this game is just going to be a simple case of executing your fundamentals of football. That's all it is. But if we can execute, I like our chances of winning this game, and I like our chances of winning big. So that's all I have for you guys, um, and I'll catch you next in the next video. So with that, this is Big Sean Power 10 signing out. Go Irish!